Whoa. Hey, everybody. That's right. Once again, totally local podcast. It's getting hot. It's getting hot on the boardwalk. That's right. We got Jenkinson's Boardwalk's own uh, Alex Taylor with us. And as always, we have Aaron Levine, LG Insurance. Uh, hi, guys. How's it going? What's up? How are we doing? Good. Uh, did I do the... What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> happy, to, uh, happy to join. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot for being here. Um, a lot to discuss, a lot going on. Uh, basically, <clears throat> you know, the, you know, I, I, I guess we should just start off by saying, you know, what your, what your position is on, on the board at Jenkinson's on the Jenkinson's boardwalk. Uh, and, and then we'll kind of just get into all the, you know, all the, all the hot topics that are going on. Sure. That was your cue, Alex. <laughs> tell us, tell, tell us a little bit about. Uh, I, get, I got you. I got you. I was opening up the uh, the Facebook live. Oh yeah. Um, all right, yeah. So you know, just for the brief introduction, my name is Alex Taylor. I am the marketing strategist here at Jenkins Boardwalk in Point Pleasant Beach. Um, quick intro. Um, you know, my family. Um, my last name is Serena. We own the boardwalk, and I, we own the beaches in Jenkins Boardwalk. Um, you know, we're one of the main attractions at the Jersey Shore. About, you know, 14, 15 different attractions that we have. Beach, rides, aquarium, fun house, food stands, restaurants, nightclub, you know, you name it. There's pretty much a little bit of everything here for everybody. Um, what really sets us apart from different shore towns in the area is back day. You know, not only do we have a beach, we have all those other attractions that are listed. Um, so if you just want to come up for the beach, you know, you can do that. But also, you know, this so many different things you can do in a day here that, you know, is really one of our strengths in terms of um, what we offer compared to other um, similar attractions. Um, and what I do, you know, we, we have a marketing team of four of us. Um, a lot of what I do is on-site branding. So like any type of signage you see on the property has to be all consistent from like when you see it on your phone from the website to when you walk up the ramp and see the exact same rules. Um, I got to make sure it's all consistent. So, the message gets across and people know pretty much exactly what to expect when they come up here. Um, Cause especially in our business, you know, if you have the things are always constantly changing with prices, with events, with dates. And, you know, if you have the wrong date or the wrong price up on a sign, somebody will find it and they will, you know, hold you to it. So, you know, I got to make sure that, you know, everything is all consistent. <laughs> and um, another thing that I do a lot is you know, kind of get a feel for what the customers think. So we send out a lot of surveys and I analyze a lot of the surveys and kind of the analytical, analytical side and seeing, you know, what events customers want to see and all these different type of, you know, guest experience surveys and things along those lines. So, you know, we don't really have like too strict of like job descriptions here. Like, you know, we kind of do it all. Um, you know, it's, it's a summer business and, you know, summer's right around the corner. And so you know, everything going on now, it's, you know, we're in these unprecedented times where you know, us and everyone else, in the amusement industry has to adapt and change the rules, but you know, I think we're doing a good job. And yeah. I, I mean, just to, just to jump into it real quick, the most important question that I've wondered, and a lot of people are uh, asking are how are the penguins? How are the penguins doing? Um, I've been looking at the cam. They're keeping social distancing rules amongst themselves, which I appreciate. Are they doing okay? Are the penguins okay? Yes, all the animals are in the aquarium and we have, you know, the aquarium staff that are volunteers that, you know, even throughout all this have been safely taking care of the animals, feeding them. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to let people inside the aquarium, you know, when we normally have feeding times and all these different cool events in there. But rest assured, the animals are doing well. Good. And uh, something that we've been doing too, you know, because we've been kind of keeping an eye on what other attractions have been kind of doing content wise throughout the pandemic. You know, we were able to, since nobody's allowed in the aquarium, we've been able to put the penguins out there and kind of move around and get some content out of that. And that's really been you know, resonating with our audience because people like to see, you know, a penguin walk around the aquarium and looking at different types of fish and things along those lines. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's great. I mean, uh, you know, speaking of wild animals, there's a lot of comments on your Facebook that I, I don't know how you guys keep up with it all. There's there's a lot of people going kind of back and forth, especially now with, uh, you know, with the beaches, with, with what the governor was talking about and people kind of, 
<laughs> you have a lot of fans that that stick that are are, are are huge fans of Jenkins and sticking up for you guys. And then you have other people that are asking like a lot of why aren't you guys doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Um, but but basically, you were kind of explaining it to me before how you you know you don't the ownership as far as the boardwalk goes they people can't get onto the beach because the town owns the board the actual boardwalk yeah the town owns the boardwalk and with governor murphy's executive order about opening the boardwalks and opening the beaches in the shore towns um effective 522 which is tomorrow um basically goes down trickles down to the local government and um Town of Portland Beach physically owns the boardwalk, so with the with the beach access points, um, you know, even though we beaches are private, um, we're not allowed to open just because of safety rules. And our boardwalks are narrow, where you know, keeping us proper social distance six feet would be difficult on the boardwalk itself. Um, but you know, we're looking forward to you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or by early June, being able to open up and with the right safety precautions and, you know, having people come enjoy beautiful Point Pleasant Beach Boardwalk and the beach that we offer. So uh, as far as that goes, you, you guys have just, you know, from what I've seen, you really kind of hit the ground running. When, when, when this stuff was announced, you were kind of on top of it and putting notices, notifications out there, like letting people know what you guys were doing or, or what, what, what you could be doing as far as when things do open. Um, as, as far as the safety precautions, what, what kind of guidelines or what, what have you guys been looking at in order to make sure that people feel comfortable and safe? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, being that we're, we're in the music industry and we, we aren't open yet. We have the luxury where we're able to see different states and different countries kind of seeing what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for example, like we've been looking at Disney and, and Florida, obviously, and seeing what the rules they've been doing, different types of parks, you know, we've been on. Me and the rest of my team have been on countless hours of seminars, um, like, you know, explaining of what other places are doing. But for the most part, I have a sign right here. Um, these are kind of the general rules of what, I mean, these are the rules that everybody knows, but, you know, these would be posted all throughout the property and different sides. And so people know, you know, once when you walk in the property, they'll see what it is. But basically saying, like, you know, wash your hands. We're going to have so many hand sanitizer stations out there that people are going to be able to use. Um, you know, cover a call for sneeze, don't touch keeping the social distance. Um, and then, you know, if you're feeling sick, you know, please, you know, contact your local healthcare provider and, um, you know, stay safe. But, you know, just kind of reassuring the, the fact that we do care and the fact that we are taking this health um, very seriously. And another thing that we've been doing to kind of gauge what the audience is thinking, um, you know, we sent out surveys and just seeing what they think, you know, um, are different, we, we pretty much broke it down to like, all right, like when you, when you guys do decide to come back, what are you going to be looking for that would reassure that's going to be a safe experience? Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are saying, I'm looking at the numbers now. Like, you know, a lot of people want to see hand sanitizing and hand washing stations. They want to see um, our employees physically cleaning rides, physically cleaning high touch surface areas. Um, you know, they want to see reduced capacity. And these things, you know, we definitely want to take seriously because, we want our customer to not only feel safe, but we want them to come back. And that's kind of the biggest thing at this point is if people want to leave the house, they want to be able to be as safe as possible. And, you know, by doing these rules and by putting out the proper signage, I think we'll be able to, you know, accomplish those details. Yeah, definitely. Um, have you been in touch with like Mayor Paul? Do you have like a like a bat phone just right to him to see, you know, what his plans are or you know, is he going to let you know as soon as he knows what he's doing? Um, and what does that look like? Um, me personally, I haven't really been in contact, but, you know, we have, you know, we don't have necessarily a bad phone, but, you know, we, <laughs> we have any communication with, the, like any business in town, you know, we, we, we have communication with the local government and just to talk about, you know, ideas and possible reopenings and making sure we're all following the safety rules and the social distancing guidelines that, when we do eventually reopen, you know, we're going to have to take very seriously. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I mean, that's that's good to hear. There's a lot of businesses out there. I know businesses, some businesses just kind of, you know, didn't know how to handle it. Some businesses kind of ignored things, um, you know, but it's good to hear that you guys are kind of on top of it because around here, it's like the summer is kind of everything. And even though Memorial Day weekend is obviously upon us, 
things are very different now. So making sure that you guys are doing everything uh, possible to get ready for when when you you know when you can open, um, you know that's that just seems to me like like the best way to to kind of go about it. Um, you know, part of part of the summer and around here, the Jersey Shore is is summer jobs, especially for you know college students or high school students. Um, there's going to be a lot of people like you know in that in that range looking looking for for, for employment uh, on the beach. Um, h- how are you guys handling that? Are you guys still like taking applications and just kind of sorting through it as you go through? Like, how is that going to work? Yeah, well, we had our uh, we have two job fairs every year, which are always in like March, February around that time. Mm-hmm. So we able we were able to have one, and then the second one was scheduled, and that's when the pandemic kind of all started up. Um, so in terms of the employees, you know, we have staff here that they are managers and have been, you know, working, getting their departments ready for when we do reopen, you know, installing all the safety plus glass and make sure all their you know, departments are cleaned out and everything. Um, but in terms of like the individual employees, like that's kind of up to the, our, you know, our HR department and the managers, just, you know, keeping, keeping in constant contact with them and kind of letting them know, you know, when to come in and when we do reopen. And also not only the employees, but also the parents, because we're dealing with a lot of 14, 15, 16 year olds and just, you know, talking to their parents and assuring them that when their son or daughter does come back, it's going to be the safest environment that they can be in. And just reassuring that, you know, they're comfortable bringing their son or daughter back to work when we do reopen. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, you know, the food stands, concessions, the the beach, like it, it won't be open for this weekend, but you guys are kind of getting ready you know, and preparing for that, um, which is obviously great. I mean, yeah. you, you employ roughly like 1,200 workers to like operate the rides, arcades, restaurants, gift shops. Yeah, I would, I would say that's, yeah. Is that, all right, mm-hmm. good. <laughs> um, and good then, data. Good data, Andrew. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, how, how's it going? You, you had some technical difficulties, difficulties, uh, much like me speaking right now, uh, before we started, but you seem to have worked everything out. How's, uh, how's your week shape, shaping up? Yeah, I threw the other laptop out the window. Perfect. Um, and I've just got the one with the camera, and this is this is like a nice break to hang out with you guys for <laughs> for a few minutes, and then I can go back to whatever the whatever the heck I was what I whatever the heck I was working on. Mm-hmm. But we've been talking for weeks about the importance of trying to get open for summer and get our summer businesses in line, and obviously that's not not happening to the way that we and the businesses would like to. But I think most people understand the need and you know i'm probably more paranoid than the next guy right now going out in public not for any reason of wanting or needing to get sick Mm -hmm. just as you know we have been turned into agoraphobic uh creatures over over the last several weeks but you know i want to take a minute and reminisce right (laughs) so alex Mm. last year on this thursday before memorial day what was it like for you getting the boardwalk prepped? Yeah, well, this is always, I would say, the busiest week for me and my team just because, um, like I said before, by all the signage, we actually have a printer in-house that we do all of our signage for because we would, like, outsource so much. And we're like, you know, we spend so much money on signs and why don't we buy the printer? Yeah. So it's, like, constantly, you know, this week is just, like, just pumping out menus and new food items and all these things that have to like be out there. Cause like, you know, we want to show the new stuff when the, because the influx customers that would be coming this weekend. Um, we kind of want to get the stuff out there make sure everything is all set. So, yeah. So this time last year, I was probably just running around, you know, make sure all the departments look good, all the TV screens, all the menus, they all were the right price and, uh, you know, showcase the new food items. And also to uh, be going to bed super early tonight because every Friday morning we have the um, it used to be PLJ now it's the Z100 uh, summer kickoff concert at Jenks Club, and oh. that would start at six in the morning. You know, national acts would go and perform. Uh, it was us, Pepsi, and some other sponsors. So that was always a really fun time. Um, which you know it should be would have been tomorrow, but this year you know we're not able to do that. But hopefully you know next year and in the future we'll be able to get some some more events like that. And so, you know, we've had some big names. Uh, I remember when I first started, I think it was like Andy Grammer and uh, last year might have been Jason Mraz and some other like, you know, big enough names to fill our, for our venues. So that was, that. that's always a good time. But, you know, 
it's you know reminiscing. It's it's always a busy week for us, just getting ready and making sure everything looks good. You know, when you're in that chaos of getting ready for the big weekend, it sucks. But th- I think this is worse, and I think we'll always remember that how bad the pandemic uh, season was compared to the chaos of getting ready for tens and hundreds of thousands of of of, of visitors as as we go through it. It's kind of mm-hmm. crazy, but. You know, uh, Andrew, you're you're my age. You know, we were probably at Jank's Club at one point at the at the same time. I, I was just <laughs> talking to my my little brother about that too. Pretty pretty wild times. Uh. <laughs> Twenty years ago at at uh, at at Jank's Club and uh, leaving there and not remembering a god <laughs> eating so much pizza right from the you know and then getting into a taxi right people don't get into taxis anymore do they like taxis are not a thing anymore i mean or? it's 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 all ubers i would i would imagine or mostly ubers i know a couple couple people that that still uh you know rebel against the uber but uh you know it's mostly it's mostly you know it's it's obviously changed since then. i i, I every time i go out now i'm like I really appreciate it, whether it be the gas station, the grocery store, Jenkinson's Boardwalk, any bar, like anywhere I go now, this is going to be a whole nother level of appreciation just for being, you know, outside, out and about because, you know, this this whole, you know, I feel like I'm grounded. I feel like I'm grounded as an adult, you know, can't go do anything fun, can't see the penguins, can't do nothing. Can't see the penguins. So, yeah. So 20 years ago I was at Jenks Club, you know, drinking ungodly amounts of, of vodka and soak on lime shots and and now i'm feeling prior, crazy just thinking about that you know <laughs> so and lime shots man they're so delicious but they come back and love the penguins and the seals we come we used to we would come down to the boardwalk especially midweek when it's not so busy and uh and and, and hang out at the aquarium so man i would love to know what like what was aaron's jam you know going down there going to jenks two two you know double fisting two two drinks in his hand <laughs> and what was he like hitting the dance floor? Like, what was what was your like anthem? I want to know, man. Twenty years oh, ago, I have, to, I have to look that up. What were, what were the songs of of the early two thousands? We'll have to we'll have to get back to. Uh, <laughs> I could see you like going out there to Gwen Stefani's uh, bananas, just going out there getting bananas, maybe drinking a banana daiquiri. I don't know. Bananas, and I, I think I had blonde, I might have had blonde hair back then. I don't know. <laughs> DJ Ronzo's watching. I don't know, Ron. Are you still on there? Can you text in what the uh, top songs of uh, of two thousand and two thousand and one were? I'm curious to know what we were getting getting ridiculous to. We might have to just like have some kind of like green screen background of 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 Janks and behind us, and maybe just do some kind of Memorial Day, uh, you know, virtual kickoff and and make some drinks. Pre Pauly D days. Yeah, get yeah. get Aaron sure. get Aaron some uh you know some SoCo and Lime shots and he could throw some computers oh, out. I think I might vomit just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great. Now I only drink hundred dollar bottles of tequila. Like I keep it classic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. Nice, nice. So uh so Alex, as far as like I would imagine that each year you kind of have things planned, new new rides or new attractions. Um, as far as this year goes, are you just going to kind of take those ideas and sort of postpone them so you could do them right? Or are you, you going to do them later in the year? Like, what was your strategy with, with stuff like that? Um, well, we didn't actually this this upcoming or this year, we didn't have any. We usually purchase like one or two new rides a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, we actually didn't purchase any. Mm-hmm. But um, I would say like in terms of new ideas, you know, we had a couple new, you know, we had a new customer loyalty program that we were going to launch out in the ride park that we'll still be able to do once we open. Um, just, just like the, some of the events that we've planned, you know, we're probably gonna have to postpone for later date. Um, but last year, the summer 2019, I think we had three new rides. Cool. One of which was a, one of which, one of which was a roller coaster, which replaced the Flitzer, which is like a classic roller coaster. Um, were people mad? So that was a big, yeah, so so that was a big part of last year. Of, uh, <laughs> when you, you replace the classic one, where people like up, I'm just reading. I'm sorry, I'm looking at these comments, and people are like diehard fans of Jenkinsons, and there's people just going, going, you know, battling it out in the comments. I kind of love it. It's very, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, the, the the roller coaster one that that was that was tough because you know Flitzer was a classic. I think I don't know how how old it was, 40, 50 years old. Um, but the new one that we have, like a lot of the, the new roller coasters are all built like family style. So they, you know, fit more people on the actual cars. Um, they take a lot less people to operate. Um, so that in the older coasters would take, you know, five, six people just to operate one ride. 
and now it just takes one person. So all things, you know, into consideration, that was a, that was a big push, but uh, yeah. So like branding that, having a grand opening, um, doing all that fun stuff is, you know, that was, that was all last year, but this year kind of just have to keep a couple things on ice and just, you know, wait for, you know, summer 2021 or maybe rolling things out in the fall and kind of, you know, extending our season a little bit, just, you know, when things start to ease down a little bit. Yeah. Um, Marianne on the comments was, was asking about, uh, opening the beach and having select access points with temporary fencing and all this stuff. I don't think Marianne really realizes the logistics that go into that. And on top of that, kind of what we touched on before, you know, as far as the property goes, you, you, it, it's like a certain area that just, you don't, you guys don't have control over. So, I mean, it's not like it, it, it it's basically kind of, you know, it's out of your guys' hands is what, what yeah. you know, what I'm, what I'm saying. Um, and I hope people understand that. I mean, people, listeners that are listening, if, if people are wondering what's going on, they've really got to understand that it's not, you know, it's not simple. It's not cut and dry. Even if you're putting on a one time event, there's a lot of hours and a lot of stuff that go into goes goes into it. And when you're at like when you're beholden to the governor and then, you know, beneath that, uh, you know, the mayor, uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on. So I mean I really got to commend you guys on how you're handling it because it's it's it 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 looks to me you know this is me you know talking from my microphone yeah I I got to imagine there's a lot of pieces that you know it's tough is basically what mm -hmm. I'm kind of understanding. Um, yeah. What uh what are some of the uh, responses or do you have people that that are working there that are kind of you know, questioning what, what they're going to be doing, or do you just kind of let people know, let the employees know, like on a day to day basis, what's, what's going to happen? No, we, we kind of just let people know on a day to day basis. Um, you know, at this point it's, you know, it's out of our control, like you said before. Um, but we're ready, you know, once we, we do get the okay. And once the restrictions do get lifted, you know, we are ready to, you know, open. So it's just getting everything out there and, you know, assuring that we are safe and, Another thing that, which I kind of touched on before is like letting the customers know too, kind of what to expect. So like putting the information on our website, like, you know, before you, before you come, what to expect. And like, you know, you're going to have to wait, like social distancing and cues while getting on the rides and certain things like that. So they have a little bit of understanding when they do come and not just be totally shocked. Like, oh, like I didn't know that we had to do this. It's just making sure everything is consistent. Like, the moment they see it on the website or the moment they see it on Facebook, it's the same exact graphic, same exact signage as they see when they come on the physical property. And that just, it just makes the, the process a lot easier to comprehend for our guests when they do come and, you know, just makes it a little more reassuring. And I'm sure like, once, you know, all of us are going to start to go places, stadiums or events or whatever, like we're going to do our due diligence and look on the websites and see, all right, like, what do I need to do? What, what should I be expecting? And we, we understand that that's what customers are going to be doing. So we have to make sure we're constantly updating and constantly, you know, spreading the right information to know what to expect when they do visit the property. That's, that's super important too. And, and I, we've, you know, Aaron, I think we talked about this last week as far as like, well, websites are concerned, you know, making sure that people are updated on things, making sure that people are, you know, aware of what's going on through social media and websites. It's really the only place you could do it. And you got to keep, you know, you got to stay on top of it. You got to keep updating it. Um, you know, just to make sure that that uh, that that people know. Um, Aaron, what have you been hearing from from your clients? Uh, you know, in the past week, recently, have there have there been any specific questions about about you know what they could be doing or should be doing that you've t you've well, talked to them well, about? Well, first and foremost, I got the uh, Billboard Top 100 from 2000 and 2001. <laughs> Thank you, Ron, for uh, sending nice. that. Up. Uh, Faith Hills Breathe was number one. In was, that, was that your jam, Aaron? Um, this is this one coming up next is more my name, more my jam. Uh, Say my name by Destiny's Child. Oh, yeah, I was, I was definitely out there, uh, out there with that one. And then uh, 2001 was Hanging by a Moment by Lifehouse, Fallen by Alicia Keys. Oh man, Jupiter, I mean that train song. I was definitely all over that when you know when we were doing that. Lenny Kravitz again. So many good memories. Thanks, Ron, for uh, for for shooting that over to and me. There's a there's a new contest too. If anyone has any pictures of Aaron specifically at Jenkinson's or from the 2000 era that they could share in the comments, you know that's that's mostly PG thirteen rated. Please please do that. We need to see these pictures. We need to have them out there. There's uh, two people with those photos, and they're not listening right now. So. <laughs> 
I think we're uh, I, I think we're good there. But anyway, from my client perspective, from what I've been talking to people about, um, been doing a lot of PPP forgiveness, idle loan related stuff, um, you know, and just trying to stay on top of of where things are going, you know, with respect to insurance policies, new insurance policies, the lack thereof of people being able to get new EPLI employment practices policies, right? We've had issues with that. We've talked about that before. Cyber policies are also harder to get right now due to the stay at home work environment. So claims are coming in across the board all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but we're also seeing a lot of moves on the residential real estate side of things. So we've been very successful helping people get their new homes insured at, at great reasonable rates with with great coverage. And there's a lot of activity actually in, in coastal coastal Monmouth and coastal Ocean County right now of people moving moving out of the cities and, and coming to the coast. Like the beaches are open, so we might as well move there and buy a house. So yeah. um, thankfully that, that side is very good and we have a lot of great coastal insurance markets to, to help with that. Business side is slow, but it's also harder to get covered sometimes. And we're just doing the best to continue to manage and help people understand that payroll protection and the payroll protection forgiveness application that's 12 pages long that has to be completed in a couple of weeks by most people. You know, I'm, I'm recommending the CPAs help people out for the most part in completing the forgiveness application just to make sure that everything is in line because you don't want to get hit five years from now with some kind of silly audit over this PPP loan. Um, you know, it's just it's just not going to be worth it. If you can get some of it forgiven, life is good. If you have to pay it back at 1%, like still pretty cheap. Um, you know, it's better than a car loan in most cases. Yeah, some people, I've, I've talked to some businesses where they went to say Bank of America and it was impossible. They went to like even PayPal, which I didn't know you could do that, but they went to PayPal to see, you know, what they could get and uh weren't offering you know you know the best stuff for them so they didn't they didn't go for it but i've also heard of businesses uh pilates businesses uh juice businesses smaller businesses you know trying to get these loans trying to get stuff and they're having a tough time and it just seems to me that you really have to work with you know you have to work with people that you trust a cpa um to make sure that you're doing everything the right way and it's just it it's got to be it's got to be about consistency because this is a you know you're dealing with bureaucracies you got to have copies of all your documents and you just have to kind of keep hammering away at it is is that what you've seen Aaron as far as people having success getting through keeping a professional in your corner right we've had multiple guests that we've been you know between from the banks to the accountants um, to the lawyers right it's all about having those professionals in your corner um, to work with you on decision making, to, to help you make the best decision, go to the right places to get money if you need to get money, or to you know to help negotiate with a landlord if there's a landlord tenant related issue, whether it be residential or on your commercial lease. You know, it's having professionals in your corner is is helpful, and I I like to be one of those professionals on many occasions. You are one I, of those professionals, Aaron. And, and I have many of those professionals in my corner also that help me stay knowledgeable to help me broad, you know, get, get that message out to, to as many people. And that's why we started this podcast is to start getting the message out. And, you know, I'm glad we can get the message out this weekend with, with Alex about what's going on at, at Jenks um, for our Memorial day kickoff. You know, I sent my employees the email. I think it's Memorial day weekend. You could take Monday <laughs> off if you're working seven days a week, like I am and want to do stuff, you know, feel free. I'll be around. Like, you know, there was no take the day off and go get drunk and please don't come to work hungover on Tuesday anymore. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> it's much more mellow tone right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, especially because it's only 60 degrees out or 58 degrees out, whatever it is right now. Um, Memorial Day is always cold, though, right? I mean, Alex, you, you tell me you're on the boardwalk every Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend is not the warmest weekend out there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, sometimes it's, it's very hit or miss. Um, I would say... Out of the three holiday weekends, in terms of like, well, Fourth of July is always, you know, like I said, up in the air because like, if it's, it depends on when the actual day falls. So, right. but Memorial, I say Memorial Day in terms of Memorial Day versus Labor Day, I would say Memorial Day is busier just because like everyone's, you know, super excited to start the summer. Everyone's all hyped up, you know, just freshly getting in. It's like basically like when you're 
when you're a freshman going to college for the first time in, in August, like you're super hyped and, you know, doing all your fun things. And like, and then Labor Day is the end of the semester where it's like, you know, we're, we're kind of tired, but we're just one last hurrah. But Memorial Day, I would say, is like the busier of the two, uh, just because that's when everyone's fresh and waiting all winter, ready to go. And the moment that they, they the first, you know, glimpse of the ocean they get or first glimpse of your favorite bar or wherever, people just love it. So that's what, you know, keeps keeps everyone coming back and we'll, it's, we'll, we'll keep everyone, you know, for coming back for not only Point Pleasant, Jenkins, but, you know, Belmars, Asbury Park, Manasquan, any type of short town, Seaside, you know, we thrive off these weekends and, you know, kudos to everybody who, you know, comes down and spends money and stimulates the economy because that's, you know, just helping people out. Yeah, no, so we have a- just announced, um, you know, and we knew this was all coming, but um, Ocean Fest has officially been been canceled this year for Fourth of July. Mm. Uh, you know, you could you could expect that to come, but when the official notice hits, that's uh, yeah, it's tough. The big, it's a big, it's a big punch in the in the in the gut to to many, especially even our vendors that come up and set up tents for a day and you know, um, and, and, and sell food on the boardwalk for that day. And, mm. but, uh, you know, large events are not going to happen for quite, quite some time, but seeing a 4th of July event canceled already, you know, it, it's expected, but it, but it's tough, but it's kind of just where we are with rolling with the punches. Yeah. You're just hoping it doesn't happen. It's like, uh, you know, I have my tickets for the see here now festival. I, yeah, I, right. <laughs> I, I bought them. I bought them like right, <laughs> like right before all this stuff. I was like, "This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna do it this year." And I hit the button, <laughs> and I'm just like, "Oh man!" Like, I hope there's refunds at the very least. You know, I know for like South by Southwest Festival in Austin, there were no refunds. Like, people just uh-huh. yeah were beat. As far as what I heard, maybe they're maybe they're respecting that, but people at first there was a lot of outrage. Um, Mike McHenry, one of the uh, you know totally locals, uh, all time favorite fans. Uh, he's asking, what's the best show, in your opinion, that has been at Jenks? He wants to know, like, Alex, what do you think over the years, what has been, like, craziest, biggest, most fun for you, most fun you've seen other people have? Um, yeah, I would I would say for sure that one is, uh, I forget the exact year, I want to say maybe, like, 2000, summer of 14 or 15, um, during our PLJ kickoff concert, we had a young, up-and-coming Ed Sheeran perform, oh, and wow. that was a he was big, but not like super, super like selling out arenas big. Yeah. And like, I didn't even know who he was until like I saw the line of people. Cause like I said, the event starts at 6 a.m. The line of people that were just waiting outside, like starting at like, I don't know, 6 p.m., 8 p.m., just waiting to, like, to camp out to get in. So they're like, this guy, needs, this guy's probably pretty big if people are waiting, you know, this <laughs> long to get in. So I would say Ed Sheeran was probably the biggest wow. name that, that we've had. Um, and that, like I said, that was before he was selling out MSG and football stadiums and all that but yeah that that was, that was super cool to see him and you know kind of behind the scenes and all that how do you guys coordinate like shows like that do you, who's who's like the events coordinator or how, how do they go about booking shows yeah that's all with um the radio stations so oh, it's like cool. the radio stations and pepsi which is the sponsor for the event you know they have their talent scouts and acquisitions and agents and all that so they kind of handle the the talent and we just handle the the venue and the some promotion at uh, sides of it and all that and so you, like, you you work with like multiple radios like 94 through the point z100 you work with different ones it's not like you just work with one and that's it right well for the event it's normally just one but throughout the summer we're always we have a couple stations um you know that we, that we do live on air broadcast in the boardwalk we do a lot of cool things with, with uh, you know different concerts different themed events um you know a lot of the radio stations will sponsor one of our events like a dog adoption day and you know they'll, they'll set up a tent and they'll give away you know, free giveaways and all that so it just it's just good exposure especially too with like when people are listening in the car you know we're we're here live at jenkins boardwalk for xyz event and um it's just more you know just getting the name out there and especially with marketing and advertising you know something that i learned is the more you get the name out there the better because it takes you know a customer a few times to really understand what they're hearing or seeing so if they see Jenkinson's a lot throughout signage and if they hear it a lot throughout radio, like they're like, all right, like, you know, this place is, is doing things, you know, we got to check it out and we got to go there. You, we were talking, I think before we started, Alex, about, you know, usually, you know, usually you're just busy. You're just doing stuff. Uh, the summer is not a break for you. The summer is when, when things get down to the nitty gritty usually. And this is kind of going to be the first Memorial Day weekend where you can kind of 
you know, aside from all the work you have to do, uh, since since it's not so hands on, obviously, because uh, you're still preparing to open, um, you're going to actually be able to, uh, in some respects, you know, kind of relax, sit at home, sit by the pool, kind of chill out. Um, you know, w- w- <laughs> is this is this something that you've never really considered since working at Jenkinson's? Because you've never been able to do it, right? Yeah, you know, it definitely is a unique circumstance. Um, you know, just being, I want to say a normal person, but like, you know, mostly anyone who doesn't work in the amusement industry or in the, the tourism industry, uh, they have these summer weekends off. So, but it's not gonna be normal because you know, I won't be able to go to the bars or see any of my friends or do any of that yeah. fun stuff. But, you know, it would just be, you know, I'll find something to do, relax a little bit, maybe play some golf, uh, just something to keep my mind off of, uh, off the work. What, uh, Aaron, what are you going to be doing this weekend? Oh, you know, changing diapers. <laughs> I feel you, man. <laughs> I feel you. I know what you mean. Um, I, I am playing. I'm playing golf Monday. That's that's already that's on the books. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, we'll we'll kind of we'll kind of see. Get some bike rides in with the kids. Go play outside. Um, you know, hopefully throw some windmill hot dogs on the grill. Um, you know that that's that's it. You know, not not much else to not much else to do really this weekend. Um, probably get a little work done. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, like, getting outside, it's not only you know, it's not only good for your mind, but it's it's good for our health as far as you know, vitamin D from the sun. Uh, you know, pe- people are saying getting outside is better than than staying inside. So I hope people, you know, I hope people consider that at least you know have have some fun. You know, put a little smile on your face. Uh, right. You know, so real quick, I know we're, you know, we're coming up on, on time right now, whatever time is. And, uh, you know, Alex and I know each other for both being on the board at Fulfill, the food bank of Monmouth and Ocean County. And uh, I know we have a virtual gala coming up. Ming is is doing the video work for it. Nice. Uh, we have our, our CEO and our, our chairs and our execs um, that are, they're actually going to be dressed up in black tie. So that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> um it's going to be streaming live on Facebook. There's going to be a live 50, 50 drawing hundred dollars a ticket. So we're talking five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars to the winner, whatever it winds up being. So that's on June 4th. So that should be pretty cool. Um, I know Alex is on committee for, for the gala as am I, and, you know, we're doing the best we can because the need for food right now, the food insecurity level is huge. Um, as we've spoken with Asbury park dinner table in the past and, you know, the need is huge and it's, it's growing and it's, it's not going to slow down. And until, you know, things are fully back to normal, which, which who knows what that is. There may be a new normal there. There's not going to be a past normal. So the f- need for food is going to be higher than ever. So Alex and I are always working, you know, to try to promote and make sure we get the word out for, for fulfill to, for donations of food, money, any other kind of support that can be given out there. It's all great. Cool. Uh, put put some info in the comments or, or send me some info, and I'll obviously share that on uh, on all the totally local stuff. Uh, mm. Alex, is there any uh, is there any other information that you'd kind of like to uh, you know to share before we before we get off this uh, get off this this podcast? No, I mean I think uh, you know we pretty much covered everything. You know, I appreciate the time, appreciate the uh, the fun stories you guys are saying about you know going to clubs back in the day. Uh, <laughs> as far as information, you know, we're just, just hopefully everyone has a nice, safe and happy, uh, Memorial Day weekend, you know, no matter where you go, whether it be like a family barbecue or like to any beach, you know, just, just please practice, you know, the, the proper social distancing guidelines and all the rules. So, so towns like us and other towns, you know, we can remain, you know, hopefully be open soon and, uh, just everyone staying safe. That's pretty much all I can ask. Yeah. I mean, everyone's definitely looking forward to it. Um, Alex Taylor from Jenkinson's Boardwalk, thank you so much for joining us. Yep. Uh, Aaron, LG Insurance, as always, man. Good, good to good to know you're out there helping people out and getting the word out and and letting people know what's going on. Um, please, you know, aside from you know changing diapers, I hope you take a little time for yourself. I know you're going to be golfing, so that's good. Uh, I want you guys both to have a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. I want everyone to you know just enjoy what we got. Um, cause at least we can go outside and at least breathe some fresh air, stuff like that. 
Um, as always, this is uh, this is Andrew uh, Top Hat, Andrew Talcott, depending on who you ask, uh, <laughs> from Totally Local Podcast, totallylocalpodcast.com. Follow me on Instagram, totally underscore local underscore podcast. More stuff coming up, more information coming up. Um, uh, guys, again, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and uh, everyone have a have a you know have a safe and wonderful uh, wonderful weekend. Awesome, Andrew. You too. See you. Appreciate later. it, guys. Thanks. Talk Be good. To you later. Bye. Okay.